It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Don Tony Show. The wait all week long is finally over. Get Don Tony's perspective on current affairs in the world of pro wrestling and much more. The Don Tony Show. And now your host, the man, the legend, Don Tony. All right, I think by next week or the week after, we'll have that intro updated to reflect Saturday morning. It is Saturday morning here in New York, 11.05 a.m. Much love as always. Welcome to this edition of the Don Tony Show, August 6th, 2022. And good afternoon to all my international friends that get to enjoy this live episode at a more reasonable time. We have a few topics to get into. A lot of sausage this week. Oh, man, we must be full with all the sausage that we served this week. Um, we got to talk about the women's tag team titles returning. We have to talk about Sasha Banks and Naomi today appearing at C2E2. Get ready. Get ready, everybody. This is going to be a wild ride. But I think the one item that people are talking about more than anything over the last 24 hours, we had a killer of a return to television, a killer return to TV. If you haven't heard about it since yesterday, it was a spectacular killer return to television. That's right, everybody. Killer Kelly made her Impact Wrestling debut Thursday. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for her because when I saw that go down on SmackDown yesterday, I said, oh, here's the perfect title, a killer return. And unfortunately, Killer Kelly, uh, she has been overshadowed by a different killer. Yeah, we're talking about Killer Cross, Karrion Cross, whatever you want to tell them. Don't cross the new boss. That is Triple H. You are seeing now in full effect investment, adding by subtracting. And, you know, remember, we prepared a lot of sausage over the last couple of weeks. That episode of the Don Tony show from about a month ago is going to be the show that will represent really 25 years of what I'm doing over here. Every single thing that we talked about on there is starting to, to really develop. And, um, you know, obviously with the women's tag titles now and, uh, you know, cross returning. Now, remember one of the other things we talked about is, you know, with more people appearing on TV, that will also equate to other people losing time on TV. And the thing is, you know, it doesn't mean that people are going to be buried. It just means that they will, uh, their pushes might be slowed down. I think that's probably the best way we described it. It slows down. And I don't know if you saw the reports that came out this week. I think Meltzer is the one that brought it out, that some people within WWE are a little bit concerned about their current status and push in WWE with now Triple H as the helm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's something we talked about a month ago. There's only a certain amount of hours on television. And if you put this on TV, someone else is going to lose an opportunity or may get less time. That's why if you notice on AEW television, and I'm not comparing the two products, but it's just a fact. You look at AEW television, one thing that they do a, a lot more than any other shows is, is backstage segments. You know, instead of having like a stare down, look at Miro. We joked about it three weeks ago. You remember Miro with the two-tone sunglasses staring at Malachi Black? Do you realize that's three fucking weeks already? And we joked like, what is this going to develop? The Redeemer. And I'm not throwing shade on Miro. I'm a huge fan of Miro. Always was, always will be. But um, you look at AEW using him on TV. The Redeemer. He shows up. He's got sunglasses. I stare at Malachi Black. Malachi Black thinks that Miro is going to join him. And nothing happens. 
You know, so we get these backstage segments because they got to find spots to just get somebody's face on TV. So you get segment after segment after segment after segment after segment after segment. So it gives you the impression that they're on. Oh, no, no, no. He's on TV every week. But the fact of the matter is, this motherfucker's wrestled three times. I know he's been injured, but he's wrestled, what, three times since June 1st? We're now in almost the second week in August. You know, we're talking two and a half months, three times. One was the pay-per-view, and the other two times, I don't remember who he faced. But, you know, so with people being on TV, other people lose opportunity. So uh, much love to Nier. Uh, Nier, uh, for our friends that don't know, lives all the way in Israel, and things are heating up in the real world in the Gaza Strip. So... Thoughts are with you, my friend. Hopefully, today's show is a little bit of an escape. I mean, I can't stop the war, but I can try to spread positive vibes, and that's all I try to do on these shows. No malice, no hate, and I hope everybody is having a good weekend and try to make the best of it in here. You know, try to make the best of it. So, um, yeah, and I see other people are echoing what I'm saying. So, um, so now Killer Cross is back, and um, let's talk about it a little bit. Last night on SmackDown, Karrion Cross, Scarlett made their WWE return. Now, for any of you out there that did not see last night, I have a question for all of you. This is Vince McMahon's Karrion Cross, and this is Triple H's Karrion Cross going back to NXT. So I ask you, do you prefer Vince McMahon's? Carrying Cross, or do you prefer Triple H's Carrying Cross? Now, that photo's from NXT. That is not from last night. This is from last night. Triple H bringing Carrying Cross and Scarlet back. Hey, you still got your uh, outfit, Cross? You still got that white button down shirt? Yeah, I could buy a shirt anyway. Don't worry about it. You still got that leather jacket? You know, was, you know what was funny about yesterday? You know what was funny about yesterday? I watched so many people who have claimed that they've been, you know, following Karrion Cross, seeing what he's doing on the indie circuit, seeing what he did here, did there, did there. And I saw them comment yesterday about, oh, he looks good with hair. I, I, did I miss something? His motherfuckers had hair for about seven months, eight months. I mean, this is, I don't know. Yesterday was a little weird with some people. Hey, he's back. He looks great. Wow. He looks different with the hair. What have you been paying attention to? I mean, I understand Scarlet. You know, you kind of like get a little distracted. You know, you, 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 you're looking at Cross and Scarlet, but you're really just looking at Scarlet. But I saw that yesterday and I'm like, do these people even understand like what they're revealing about themselves. It's amazing. But they made their return yesterday and they returned with a fucking mang. Now, on this show here, it is no secret that Karrion Cross is a friend of the family. And yes, I am biased my appreciation personally for Karrion Cross and support. But I will never gush and sugarcoat and exaggerate just to please, you know, him or someone else. If I feel a certain way about something, I'll say it. And the first question that comes in is this. Actually, you know what? Before I even do that, let, let's paint the picture of what happened yesterday. Yesterday on SmackDown, we were going to get Roman Reigns talking about his opponent at Clash at the Castle, Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns was in the building yesterday. Drew McIntyre was in the building as well. So at the end of the show, we have a little bit of a confrontation. Roman Reigns is in the ring with the Usos. He's talking about his opponent at Clash at the Castle. Drew McIntyre shows up. And the next thing you know, we go black and white. Drew McIntyre. This is funny. This is almost like the live stage version of what they do in the back. Instead of standing in front of a monitor, you know how they stand sideways in front of the monitor? He's standing sideways in front of the Titan Tron. 
So it's kind of like the large version of it. I'll take the extra large version. So he's standing on the side. We're looking in black and white. And we know immediately that it's the return of Cross. You see the same, you know, uh, intro video as before. Scarlet's on the stage. They come out and Karrion Cross immediately goes for Drew McIntyre. Now, I joked earlier today. Guys, gals, I'm not commit. I'm not kidding. When I saw this pose, you know, I, I saw it live in real time. By the way, for everybody who was in a watch party yesterday, my sincere apologies. Yeah, I'm not kidding. If you think I'm lying, you could Google it. I use vMix as a video software to stream video, and that's where my, my signals come from. vMix had a very big update yesterday, and it automatically installed. And because of that, I couldn't rerun vMix while we were live doing the watch party. So my video went out, and the only way I could have resolved it is reboot my computer. And if I would have done that, it would have disconnected everybody from the watch party. And um, so yesterday was kind of screwy. Like, I was able to text, obviously, and a little talking, but the video was out for a little while. But we had fun yesterday. We're going to have an aw awesome drawing on Monday as well. So... I saw this and I started laughing because here where I live in Howard Beach, Queens, home of John Gotti and others, you know, that's how some of my Italian friends say hello to you when they haven't seen you in a while. I mean, if they haven't seen you, uh, hey, Anthony, come here, you bastard. And they grab you by the head and they're like shaking you like a rag doll. And then they're like, come here. And they just hug you. I'm telling you, that's exactly what they do. If this was your head, I'd be like, oh, oh, come here, come here. Carrie Cross grabs Drew McIntyre, beats the balls off of him. It looked great on TV, smashing his head in the ring steps. And then you have Scarlet. Scarlet puts the hourglass in the ring, turns it upside, turns that son of a bitch upside down, sending a message to Roman Reigns. Doomsday will soon arrive. Then they back off a little bit and absolutely spectacular. TikTok, TikTok, I'm coming from you, coming for you. So Cross and Scarlet thrusted. I know that sounds a little bit sexual, but thrusted right into the main picture, main event picture. Uh, excellent. I liked it. Unexpected. Now, look, yes, we talked about Cross returning to WWE. I said this back in November. I say it again now. I know for people that don't like a, uh, WWE, even if you like WWE, but you don't like Vince and you don't like management, you don't like Kevin Dunn, one thing that I see over and over again that a lot of people crave for is that when someone is released, they want said wrestler to trash WWE. They want that wrestler to just throw WWE under the bus. And sure, people have burned bridges in the past and still returned. But you don't ever forget where your bread is buttered. And as I have said for years and years and years, this is something that people either intentionally ignore or they're just stupid. You know, these wrestlers know exactly who they are signing with when they joined WWE, when they started, you know, there's been mass releases for years and years and years. We used to talk about it in the early 2000s. They would have some big time releases. But these wrestlers know, especially over the last two plus years, they release 50 people, and then you join them, you could very well be on the chopping block as well. If you don't deliver, whether your opinions are not being heard or you don't execute, whatever the situation is, you can be on the chopping block. And people out there just crave for said person to throw WWE under the bus. And most of these people do not. They don't because they're professionals. They know who they're signing with. Yes, it's frustrating and it's disappointing, you know, that you get released and it doesn't work out. But you know what you're dealing with when you sign. And there's always that possibility of coming back. Remember, when Cross got released, I don't know if you remember all those videos, that motherfucker went into the gym and took all his frustrations out 
in the gym and got himself in even better shape. I mean, when if any of you have not seen him shirtless in quite some time, you will see he put on some mass since then. I know he went carnivore for a little while. And look, Scarlett is Scarlett. She doesn't need to improve too much. But now he is back. And now we get to see more of the Triple H vision of what Cross is. And it's going to be a hybrid of NXT. Now, they're not going to do natural born killers that we used to always vision with those two because, you know, it, it is SmackDown. And it looks like Cross and Scarlet will be on SmackDown. Remember, Roman Reigns is the unified champion, undisputed WWE Universal champion, which means he could appear on both shows. So just because Cross showed up tonight does not necessarily mean that he is a SmackDown wrestler. He could be a Raw wrestler. I personally think he's better for SmackDown. Definitely think he's better for SmackDown. Different energy, different vibe than Raw. I don't know why that is. And it's not just the extra hour, but that's what went down yesterday. It was excellent. Now, let's talk a little reality about Karrion Cross. And again, you know, and I and I know, look, he has spread so much love towards yours truly and my former co-host, Kevin Castle. You know, and I know a lot of you've been asking, hey, what happened to the interview and this and that? You know, the the fact is is that you know, I've said this before, I haven't heard anything about from Kevin as far as wanting to do it. I think he still wants to do it. Just because Cross signed with WWE again doesn't mean we can't do it. We could still do it. So I'll reach out to Kevin this week and see if he still wants to do it. And it, now the other Kevin, because Kill Cross's name is Kevin too. I don't call Cross by Kevin. It's, you know, it's a little too personal on the shows. But I'll reach out to Mister Castle, see if he still wants to do it, and we'll we'll get it done. We'll get it done. Now, with that said, let's be a little honest for a minute. Mikey Rivello, thank you for the 20 spot sent in this super chat. He says, props for nailing your sausage about crossing the women's tag belts. Question for you. With Scarlett putting the hourglass at Roman's feet last night, do you think Triple H would have Cross be the one to dethrone Reigns of the title? Okay. I've only had about 12 hours to think about this. And my answer is, early on, yes. And no, after Brock Lesnar, after Daniel Bryan, after Edge, after all of these people, even I will say to you, I think even Karrion Cross, if you talked to him privately and you promised him, you know, that you would never tell it to anyone else, I even think he would say to you, I shouldn't be the one to dethrone him after all of these bigger stars. But, but, I'm not saying this is going to happen but it's something you should keep on the back of your mind. Roman Reigns losing a championship without being pinned. Everybody thinks Triple H is an outsider. He's not. Yes, he's got a younger vision. It is not as outdated as Vince McMahon. And I don't see anything really that much outdated, but you're not going to see a dramatic change in the WWE landscape because Triple H is at the helm. Triple H has been involved in this process for a long time. And let's also keep it realistic. I know people clamor over what he did in NXT with the NXT stars. That shit drew 700,000 viewers. You know, the noise that you're reading online gushing over Triple H, especially what he did for NXT, now you could do it on the main roster. Um, if you're a good cook for a diner, and I'm not trying to insult anyone, but if you're a good cook for a diner, and then suddenly you think you could go to this posh restaurant that seats 500 instead of 50, and you expect that diner to, to that cook to just deliver the same exact thing, whatever you did here, do here. You know, the difference is, with a diner that only seats 50, you could only seat 50. So even if you had 100 people that wanted to come in, you only seat 50. When it comes to ratings, ratings are limitless. There's an infinite number. And you have people online that want to give you this impression 
that what he did drew millions and millions. It didn't. It didn't. As much as you love, look, I loved Cross and Scarlet in NXT. I loved the the intro. I loved the the presentation. I loved what I saw. But at the same time, I kept it in perspective that, okay, I don't see a million people tuning in. I don't see a million people tuning in. Gar uh, Gargano, uh, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly feud. Their fucking feud is one of my favorites of all time in NXT, and they still can't get 800,000 viewers. So let's keep it in perspective a little bit. Cross, you know, is a major player if presented in the right term. So he's going to be tweaked. It's not going to be cut and dry what he did in NXT. A lot of it will echo that, but it has to now morph for the WWE universe. It has to be more of character, character driven. You cannot have you know just your, your the wrestling fans not responding you know so let's keep it in perspective you know i saw people over the last couple of weeks oh cross is going to come back and he's going to win the championship of this and that yeah in time but you don't do it immediately because you have to develop that relationship indifference is the worst thing that could happen carrying cross the last time he was there there was a lot of indifference that was vince mcmahon fault heading creative but you know drew mcintyre has been one of the mvps of that fucking company for the last bunch of years he's the covid champion and anybody in their right mind that thinks that carrying cross is going to leapfrog drew mcintyre in the heavyweight championship department simply because triple h just started i think even some of the biggest supporters of Triple H would say, yeah, you know, that's not the, that's, I don't think that's a very smart thing to do. So now the question is, remember, Clash at the Castle is coming up shortly. Does Karrion Cross get thrown into that match and do they make it a three-way? I think that is very possible. If Cross would have come in, attacked someone else, and sent the message, okay, down the line, down the line. But you put the hourglass in front of Roman Reigns. That's very important because if Roman Reigns loses the championships to Drew McIntyre, that hourglass is a sign for Roman Reigns, but not for the championships. I don't remember Cross yesterday doing this, you know, that he wants the titles. But Cross wants Roman Reigns, obviously. So my immediate reaction is, you know, how would you all feel if Roman Reigns loses the championships to Drew McIntyre, but Drew McIntyre pins Karrion Cross? I'll be honest with you. I don't like that scenario at all. I don't like that after this entire run, Roman Reigns loses his championships without being pinned. And that means Karrion Cross is pinned as well. Not a fan of that at all. Not a fan of it at all. So right now, my suggestion to all of you is let's take a wait-and-see approach as far as Karrion Cross goes. Let's see if he gets thrown into this match as a three-way. If he gets thrown as a, as a three-way, I would be a little bit concerned. Unless, unless, remember my other scenario, well, two of them. One, if Drew McIntyre wins both belts, I'm a fighting champion. I want to take on all contenders. I have two belts. I should be fighting two, cha two, cha two championship contenders. Yeah, the Drew McIntyre character may do that. He may win both belts and then say, I'm going to defend the Universal Championship on SmackDown. I'm going to defend the WWE Championship on Raw. And then he may lose one. And that's how you split the belts back up. That scenario is still very possible. The other scenario is maybe Roman Reigns is forced by Adam Pierce to defend both championships at Clash at the Castle against both of them. Maybe it's one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe Roman defends the Universal Championship against Drew. Maybe he defends the WWE Championship against Cross. If that scenario happens, I don't see Cross winning the WWE Championship or for Roman Reigns, not this soon. So the the scenarios we come up with right now, I don't like much of all, any of them. I don't like much of any of them. Um, 
Sami Zayn, maybe Sami Zayn steps up. Maybe Sami Zayn is the obstacle and Sami Zayn ends up taking on Karrion Cross at Clash at the Castle. But let's see. Yeah, JR, he says, I sound like Nikki Ash. Yeah, I, my internet, internet. Wait, you're saying that Nikki Ash sounds like a man? What is that? That's, 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 what's wrong with you? No, I know. All, I sound like a, like an English version of my Miro impersonation. The Redeemer. I defend the titles. Rams fan, shout out to the Watch Party Familia. Yeah, much love to all of you. You know, what a shame. So many people that sign up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because Monday we're giving away, we're giving away these uh, autographed tops cards of the Dudleys on eBay right now. The ones limited to two ninety nine are selling for a hundred bucks. These are worth one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. And I get so many people that say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to be at the watch party," and they don't show up. Or some people are slick; they show up stay five minutes and leave. And they think, oh, now I'm entered. That's not the way it works. You know, these watch parties end up ending, you know, because people don't show up. You know, it's not my loss. You know, it's everybody else's loss. But, you know, if everyone that does show up, I, I, I don't get that. I don't get it. People drooling every week. Oh, man, I want that. I want that. Well, show up. Doesn't cost anything. All right, Rams fan. Um, do I think the cross return was a month too early? You would have waited. It's hard to say right now. It's hard to say because if Roman doesn't get pinned and he loses the championships, that sucks. I don't care who it is. It could be my favorite wrestler of all time. That sucks. If cross interferes and lays out reigns and Drew gets the title, all right. But that also sucks, you know, because why would Cross help Drew win you know, after what he did yesterday? So right now, my early vibe is that it may end up being a three-way clash at the castle. It could end up being a three-way. Um, I don't know. I, right now, it is way too early. We're not even 24 hours removed of Cross returning. But one thing I think is for certain, we're glad he's back. He will have more creative freedom. He will have to be tweaked for the WWE universe, not the NXT universe. And a little scenario, by the way, thank you for the Super Chat Rams fan. One scenario that I thought of, and I said it earlier as a joke, but I started getting like DMs from people like, dude, that's, that's, that's an awesome idea. You know what Cross should do? Cross should come out with the fucking mask. Not wear it, but he should keep it in his arms, keep it in his hands. And when he destroys an opponent, he should put the mask on while they're laid out and then beat the fuck out of them even more. If he chokes someone out, put the mask on the head and just beat the fuck out of them. Seriously. That's what I would do. Don't just retire that mask. Let him come out with it. Let him hold it. Let him put it on the other person. Let him put it on the person during the match and just get even angrier and just start beating the fuck out of it. Seriously. That's what I would do. I still got, I don't know where it is. I still got that. You know, I have the first ever autographed WWE figures. I have the first one ever of Scarlet and Cross. I almost, I almost burnt, no, I didn't burn them, but I almost gave them back to them. I was going to offer it to them like, hey, you want it for keepsake? Now, since they're back, you know, I'll probably hold on to it for a little bit longer, but I'm still going to offer it to Cross and Scarlet. But hey, nice to see them back. Drew McIntyre with an epic tweet late last night. I don't know if you saw it. Was I jumped? Was I jumped by the guy last seen wearing bondage and a helmet? I've had better Fridays. Oh, that was funny, man. I was funny. Seriously, bring that fucking helmet back and just beat the balls out of people because of it. So. Awesome. Very cool. Now, um, let's talk about a few other things that I need to bring up. Liv Morgan. You know, this was an interesting topic yesterday. Uh, you know, Rhea Ripley decided to use it as a storyline, which was very smart on her part. But Liv Morgan yesterday, they decided to do a tournament to crown 
the next number one contender for Liv Morgan's championship. So yesterday, let's put this back on the screen. All right, so we already talked Roman and Drew. Um, I, yeah, you know, we could talk about this. Hang on, we'll get back. Okay, so there we go. These are the women that were going to be facing each other in the gauntlet match last night. The winner is going to face Liv Morgan at Clash at the Castle. Liv Morgan came out yesterday and got booed a little bit. And she also got the you tapped out chance. I want to make this perfectly clear to everyone out there. It is very rare to have a baby face tap out, you know, and receive sympathy for it. They had her come out wearing a brace to try to generate some sympathy. The fans chanting, you tapped out, they would have chanted to anybody. Maybe Pat McAfee might be in uh, one exception. But the fans chanting, you tapped out, and having a little bit of fun with Liv Morgan yesterday, you know, I, I, look, the fans are not immediately going to turn on Liv Morgan. She is one of the most beloved women in that company. People have been clamoring, wanting her to win the briefcase. She won the championship. I mean, there was like 10,000 likes on some profiles, people online, you know, showing reaction videos, crying, you know, just because WWE decided to do a stupid finish where she tapped while the referee counted to two. You know, like there's, there was no excuse for that. And the answer she gave yesterday is creative. Oh, I tapped out because I thought the referee counted to three. If the referee counted to three, you know, you, you don't just go, hey, I just retained my title. It, it, I'd be with my other hand going, it was stupid. The finish was stupid. It's just that people don't want to put any blame on Triple H whatsoever. The finish was stupid. And the crowd, anytime somebody taps out, let alone Ronda Rousey, they'll tap it to the ref. They'll tap it to the ref. So yesterday was because of the circumstance, the finish was stupid. You know, the fans didn't like the finish, even if Liv retained, and they took it out on Liv yesterday. Um, the weird thing about it is Ronda Rousey is now suspended in storyline. When she comes back, she's got to be a heel, you would think, right? Charlotte Flair is about to return. You're not going to have Charlotte Flair as a heel. Ronda Rousey is a heel. Shayna Baszler is a heel. Lacey Evans is a heel. And Liv Morgan as a heel. Liv Morgan is best served as a cute baby face who loves her fans and loves what she does. You do not change that because you had a stupid finish and the fans are chanting to a baby face, you tapped out, you tapped out, you tapped out. Liv Morgan could turn heel. Sure, absolutely. I'm not saying that you can't, but you don't just take everything that just happened and then just turn it upside down because of the finish that we got. So I would say, relax, everyone. Relax. Let it play out a little bit. Now, what I do like from yesterday is who won this gauntlet. Yesterday on SmackDown, we had the gauntlet. Here's the results in order. Sonya Deville beating Aaliyah. Sonya came out, cut a promo first, little heel promo. And guess what? The fans were chanting for Liv afterwards. They cheered for Liv afterwards. So, you know, we should lighten up a little bit. You know, I'm not blaming on South Carolina or other areas, but you could go to a, a town and get a different reaction. It happens. You don't turn Liv Morgan's character upside down because of this. If the necessity is needed down the line that she should be a heel, then you turn her heel. But you don't take one night, one moment, one rather dumb finish because the explanation was dumb. Oh, I tapped out only after 
the, I thought the ref counted to three. Anybody out there, you're walking down the street right now and you get mugged and somebody puts a headlock on you. Give me your fucking money, you son of a bitch. Give me your fucking money. Give me your phone. Are you going to stand there and go, stop, stop? It's like a Benny Hill cartoon. It's a, Benny Hill. Yeah, Benny Hill was a cartoon too. It's like a Benny Hill episode. I, I only tapped after I thought the ref counted the three. What re response could, could have lived given yesterday? There was no response. So let's relax. But Sonya Deville beats Aaliyah. You know, then, and most of the matches, they were all two minutes with the exception of the last one, which was three. And by the way, I added up the amount of wrestling yesterday. It was right around 40 minutes, a little bit more than, you know, the Vince McMahon regime, but still, you know, 40 minutes in a two hour show, you know, I, I think, you know, if you get it to 50%, I think we're in a good, nice little sweet spot, little G spot for WWE. Sonya Deville beats Aaliyah. Raquel Rodri Rodriguez. They got a Triple H. What the fuck? Now you're telling her to smile when she goes down to the ring? When she's constipated and she's shitting, she's supposed to be, ee, 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 won't come out, e. She's smiling more now than before. She's running down the ring. She's getting hit. She's smiling. And it's not even a smiling like, you know, like Kevin Owens, he's getting punched in the face. He's smiling. Mick Foley, he's got a tooth hanging out of his head. He's smiling. He's a, Raquel, Rodriguez, everything she did yesterday, she's smiling. It's more now than before. What the fuck? But nobody says anything because Triple H is God right now. He's God. Raquel beats Sonya. Very happy about it. Raquel beats Shotzi. Raquel beats Zia Lee. Raquel beats Natalia. And here comes. You, Soulfly, you think that's a psychotic smile? Do you, listen, a psychotic smile? I can't do it. I'm not a psychotic. Raquel Rodriguez is not a psycho. That is not a, a psycho. This is someone who's so extremely happy about just getting the opportunity that I love life. What you see in that picture right now on the screen, that is not a psycho. That is not a psycho. Um, anyway, Shayna Baszler beats Raquel Rodriguez. Shayna Baszler gets the opportunity to take on Liv Morgan at Clash at the Castle. Could we ultimately see Shayna Baszler as your SmackDown Women's Champion taking on Ronda Rousey? That is a match that has been teased a little bit before, a little appetizer. I think that is a match that I think Triple H would definitely love to have at a high-profile pay-per-view, premium live event, Survivor Series maybe. I could see that happening. I don't know if you could save it all the way to WrestleMania. That would be a, a, a stretch, Michael. But right now, my early gut is, oh, man, if they have Shayna beat Liv and then we get Shayna versus Ronda Rousey, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm buying that. Seriously, I'm, I'm in for that. So. Very, very, very good. Very, very good. I, 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 I'm cool with that. Nice to see Shayna Baszler get that win yesterday. So she goes on to clash at the castle to take on Liv Morgan. Um, all right. Yesterday also, and let's hold out hope, everyone. Let's hold out hope. Yesterday, Shinsuke Nakamura took on Ludwig Kaiser again. And the step is, is that if Shinsuke wins, he gets a title shot next week against Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. And Shinsuke won with the Kinshasa. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you, I am 100% with you. A lot of you are saying, why can't this be at Clash at the Castle. Now, the fact we're getting the match at all is a great thing. But the reason why we all want to see it at Clash at the Castle instead of next week is because we feel at Clash at the Castle, they will be given more time. It won't have a storyline attached to it. 
And, you know, I think it'll be a more high profile match at Clash at the Castle. On SmackDown, it could end up being a throwaway match. You know, it doesn't feel the same way. I think, and I'm holding out hope, I'm holding out hope that something happens next week. Maybe Ludwig Kaiser gets involved. Maybe there is a bullshit finish and a rematch is announced for Clash at the Castle. That's what I'm holding out for hope for. So next week we get the match and I'm not complaining. I'd rather see it on SmackDown than not see it at all. But I'm holding out hope. We got to get it. Gunther going overseas. I know that's not his home country, but Gunther versus Shinsuke in England for Clash at the Castle. Oh, man, that has international flavor all over it. So we get next week the match, but let's hold out. We may get a rematch at Clash at the Castle. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, the Viking Raiders beat Tommy Gibson and Jim Mulkey. After the match is over, Kofi uh, shows up with a kendo stick. Uh, King Woods, Xavier Woods, home recovering. He'll be back soon. Kofi is there on his own, getting a little revenge. He ultimately takes on Eric and beats Eric. I don't know, man. The The idea of the Viking Raiders may be next in line and getting a tag team title shot. I don't know. It just didn't feel it after yesterday, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know where they're going with that. Um. So the other two things that went down yesterday, and this was fun. It was a nice, fun opening to SmackDown. Ricochet taking on Happy Corbin. We get highlights from Smack, uh, SummerSlam to open up SmackDown, and we see Corbin in the back looking at the highlights of him versus McAfee, and everybody is laughing at him. He's sulking a little bit. This leads to a little back and forth verbally with Ricochet and Corbin. They end up facing each other in the ring, and Ricochet beats Corbin. They gave them about 12 minutes, which was great. A lot of people thought that this was probably in Corbin's top five matches of his entire career. And it was nice to see Ricochet get, you know, not only a, a longer match, but one that he really showcased. I mean, he pulled a couple of things out that we have not seen with him for a while. And after the match was over, Ricochet and McAfee are playing catch with a football and McAfee autographs the football and throws it into the crowd. I like that. I like that. Nice little twist. So Ricochet gets a nice win over Corbin. Let's see where it goes from here. And the other thing that happened yesterday was Sami Zayn. The, this has got to take a, a twist. It's got to happen with a twist. It's got to. It's taken too long. I know Zayn was out with an injury, but this is taking too long. Sami Zayn wants to talk to Roman Reigns. So early on, the Usos, you know, look, Roman doesn't want to talk to you right now. Paul Heyman is not there yesterday. All right, you do the duties for Paul Heyman. Get everything set up for us. Get everything set up for us. You know, we'll let you know later when you could talk to Roman Reigns. So Sami Zayn, we do another segment later on. He's a little impatient. He's knocking on the door again. What do you want? What do you want? The Usos are now threatening Sami Zayn. You know, you better start pulling your weight over here or you're taking that shirt off. So, you know, is this going to ultimately lead to Sami Zayn versus Roman? And if so, is there even a title on the line? I mean, Sami Zayn obviously is going to cost someone a title in some capacity. It seems like the only way they could go with this. But I don't know. I don't know if you felt left with this, but this is how I feel right now. We got Drew versus Roman. That's the match that's selling Crazy amount of tickets overseas. They sold, what, 70,000 tickets? I mean, this is going to be one of those events that you're going to remember years to come. But now you got Cross thrown in the mix. You have Sami Zayn lingering in the background. Brock, I don't expect to be back anytime soon. Let him sell his injuries. Keep him off TV for a while. Focus on this. But it just feels a little too congested, in my opinion. So. And as far as JR saying who's going to take the titles off the Usos, you know, the funny thing is, 
I know ultimately they expected Randy Orton to turn heel and feud with Riddle. I know about eight months ago, I joked and I said, you know, wouldn't it be something if Riddle was the one to turn heel? You know, this obsession for Randy. What if he turned heel? It's almost like, you know, a scorned lover. You know, like, like almost like a fatal attraction. I'm saying friendship attraction, not, you know, sexual. But um, now under the Triple H helm, I'm wondering if he reunites RK Bro as a tag team. I'm not saying, you know, that it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. But now you got to think a little bit differently with Triple H at the helm. And if there was any tag team, if you said to me right now, DT, you could pick one tag team to dethrone the Usos of the championships, I would choose RK Bro. I know they've won titles before and I know they've lost titles before. But right now, there is no other tag team on that roster other than the Street Profits. Unless they do a stipulation, the Street Profits, if they lose, they can never compete for the tag titles ever again against the Usos. I would never do ever again. That is one of the most dumbest stories. I hate shit like that because you're basically strapping the, the, the Street Profits that they can never contend for a tag title again. Why would you put that on you? It was so stupid when they did that with Cody in AEW. Like, why so early on? If if he loses, he could never fight for the AEW heavyweight title. Why would you do that? That step came and went, didn't sell millions and millions, and you strapped one of your heavyweight main event contenders, you know, main event draws at the time for AEW. I wouldn't do that in, in WWE. The only way I would tweak that is the Street Profits can never challenge the Usos for the titles ever again. That's fine because we had that with Riddle. Remember, Riddle could never take on Roman Reigns again for a championship. So that's where I could see this possibly going. You give the Street Profits one last opportunity, and this time they make good on it. Zaki can law with the five spot. Thank you very much, my friend. What do I think about Sammy coming to his senses, teaming with KO to beat the Usos? It's their dream to become tag champs together. That's not bad either. That is not bad either. I mean, you know what my immediate reaction is to what you said? Uh, draft. We have the draft coming up sooner than you realize. So maybe Kevin Owens gets drafted to SmackDown, and then maybe Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn team up again. Could they dethrone the Usos? Yeah, that's that's realistic. There's a lot of steps that need to be filled, you know, before you could get to that. But I like that idea. That definitely could happen. You know, I, you, yeah, thank you, Rams fan. I said last week and a week before that my gut feeling is whoever dethrones the Usos are not a tag team on the roster right now. Whether that's RK Bro reforming or whether that's Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens forming a team on Alliance again. But I think the tag team that dethrones the Usos, if it's not the Street Profits, it's a team that is not currently together in WWE. Maybe a tag team that really has not had a run yet. I and mean, I still feel that way. I definitely feel that way. Um, oh, AS7607, you're very much welcome. She got her signed photo from the other day, and I included two others, a little extra gift. Someone that won a photo the other day declined his prize. He's like, nah, that's all right. I got plenty of stuff. So I gave it to her, which is always good. So shout out to Johnny for being generous with that. So, all right. So that was SmackDown yesterday. That was Cross News and a few other things. Now, the other big news coming out of yesterday with WWE is this. Sausage cooked, served, yeah, well, of course the family doesn't get any credit, friends. It was Monday's episode where I said, Sausage, everyone, Triple H and WWE are about to address the women's tag titles. It is imminent, and it could happen as soon as this Friday. Do you see anybody out there saying, hey, Don Tony is reporting Sausage? That's what we said Monday. 
This is what you got yesterday. Women's tag team championships will be crowned new t- champions. It starts on Monday. We do not have brackets made up yet. I don't know if they will announce a bracket. I think we will just do matches. They'll announce on Monday, maybe two women's tag matches. And they go on further. Now, uh, yeah, toxic attraction on the main roster. I can see that, Soulfly. I absolutely can see that. But this is big. This is big. When people said that WWE threw the NXT women's tag titles in the trash because they just are killing the tag team division. That's clickbait. That's trying to get hits based on emotion just to trigger people like, you know, cause people will tune in just to say, yeah, fuck you WWE. Yeah. Fuck this. Fuck this. They don't know what they're doing. Fuck, 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 fuck. And then three weeks later, you realize that that's not the case at all. Um, Sasha Banks and Naomi gave the belts to John Laurinaitis. We out of here. Remember what we said a couple of weeks ago, I brought up John Cena and CM Punk at least four times on this show already. I said, wouldn't it be something if we crown new women's tag team champions just to have Sasha and Naomi show up and claim that they are the real WWE women's tag team champions. And they are now immediately put into a feud that is still possible. You know, We talked about it many, many weeks ago that Sasha's return to WWE, the relationship she had with Vince McMahon, good and bad, would weigh heavy on her return. Triple H, creatively at the helm, is going to weigh heavy. You know, but there's something interesting I want to share with you. Something interesting I want to share with you. Today, in Chicago, at C2E2, Sasha Banks and Naomi will be present. They will be signing autographs. They will be taking pictures. They will be making a decent amount of money. Now, you know for a fact that fans today, especially the kind of money they're paying, you will hear a thousand times with cell phones being recorded. Sasha, are you coming back to WWE? Naomi, when are you coming back to WWE? We miss you. We need you. You're going to have little kids crying about them not being on TV. It's going to be really interesting to see how they react. Now, you go to Sasha Banks' Twitter profile right now. She is posed with the Tag Team Championship, a banner, a thumbnail. If you looked at her profile, you would say, oh, she's still with WWE. Now, we talked about that a few weeks ago as far as the scenario. Will they have all of 2022 off? Will they come back and confront whoever is crowned the new women's tag champs? It could end up being Dakota Kai and EO Sky. We may end up getting Dakota Kai and EO Sky versus Sasha and Naomi if they return. So this is going to be a big story later today. When they start that autograph signing, just give it a few hours and you're going to start seeing some cell phone footage. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they respond. They're not going to be cold and say, no, we can't talk about it. No, we can't talk about it. I think you'll probably hear never say never, probably more than anything else. But I want to show you a little something. I don't know if it's a big deal, but it's definitely something that's noteworthy. And who knows? This may have to do with Sasha and Naomi returning. And I'll show you why. James Edwards, welcome to the family, my friend. Welcome. Uh, Sasha Banks, this was the advertisement at C2E2 up until yesterday. As you could see on the screen, her real name, Mercedes Varnado, and in parentheses, her character name in WWE is Sasha Banks and the Mandalorian. That is how they advertised her up until yesterday. Last night, after the announcement of the Women's Tag Team Championships returning, that profile on C2E2 was changed to this. The Sasha Banks name removed. Now, we go to Naomi. Where are you, Naomi? 
Hey, y'all. Uh... Oop, sorry. Wrong one. That's the right one. Okay. Oh, ah, I kind of screwed it up. Damn it. There we go. There's Naomi's. That was Naomi's advertisement at C2E2 for today. Last night after the women's tag team title tournament was announced, Naomi's profile at C2E2 was changed to this. The Naomi reference has been removed. So at C2E2, they removed the Sasha Banks reference and the Naomi reference. Now, could this be storyline that they're not even allowed to use the names? No, I don't think so. I think this is just the case that if Sasha and Naomi are going to return to WWE, all right, your project outside at C2E2, that has nothing to do with WWE. You do that as a Mercedes, you do that as Trinity, fine. That's, that's, that's cool. Now, the telltale sign is how they autograph their photos. Pay attention to that because you might remember a story about a year ago, which honestly, you can't enforce it. it you, you'll remember this story. It was about a year ago that WWE told, there was a story that came out that WWE told all former wrestlers, you are not allowed to sign your wrestlers character WWE character names if you are not part of WWE when that story came out I ripped it to shreds there is no way that Sean Waltman if he does an autograph sign it he can't sign X-Pac there is no way that if the road dog does an autograph signing there's no way they're doing an autograph sign today Road Dog and Billy Gunn are doing an autograph signing today. I will never do another show again if he signs it in his real name. Or I don't think he would sign it in his TNA name. You can't enforce that. And you're not, especially now, you can't. I look at this like this. I think back to the early 2000s. Now, obviously, yes, I agree with you, Ray. Trinity Fatu is a pretty name. but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any. Do I have any Sasha Banks autographs? Him? I don't have one handy. But Sasha Banks, I don't know if you've ever seen her autographs, but she just puts a dollar sign and a letter B. A lot of wrestlers do that now. They just write their initials. I don't know how they, I think Naomi signed her name. I don't think it was just an N and a scribble. I think she actually writes her name. I have some autograph cards of Naomi inside. But Sasha just does a dollar sign and a letter B. And I think she does like two lines afterwards. I don't see her signing Mercedes Vernado. I don't see her putting an M and a V in two lines of this. And I think she's going to sign a Sasha Banks. Back in the early 2000s, when I did some autograph signings for Video Game Central here in Queens, that's no longer a business. Um, those wrestlers, they were able to do autograph signings outside of WWE, but the place would have to pay a fee. But these wrestlers were allowed to sign under their, you know, wrestler names. Plus, the photos were WWE promo photos. In the case of Naomi and Sasha today, they'll probably have headshots. If you notice the autographs that I give away on the shows, they're not promo photos. Because these wrestlers, they will do backstage photo shoots and then they will get a bunch of prints made up and they will sign it and it gets sent out to various places, complimentary. They should have their own photos today, but it's going to be interesting to see how they sign them. But I think the Sasha Banks you know, profile being removed, I think that is more of just, okay, this is not a WWE you know, promoted event. This is something totally outside of WWE. So that is why the references were removed. Believe me, if this was a big issue with WWE, those names would have been removed a month ago. They would not allow it to be produced for this long and then the day before remove it. It could be storyline as well. It could be storyline because that happened yesterday after the women's tag team title tournament was announced. Very interesting. Jeff says, DT, I think you got it wrong. It wasn't the story that their wrestlers can't sign their real name. Um, 
I didn't say that they can't sign their real name. Uh, they can't sign character names. No, 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 no. If you're, you're, no, no, no. You're saying to me that if my name is Anthony de Blasi and I re wrestled for WWE as Don Tony, that if I go on the outside, I can't sign my real name. No, you can't do it on WWE licensed stuff. No, no, you can't. The story was, but again, the story was stupid. The story was stupid in the first place. The story was stupid in the first place. All right. We're talking about wrestlers who left. The story was stupid in the first place. I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on that. Now, on Wednesday, on Wednesday's show, we're going to get into this a little bit. Um, AEW trademarked all elite women. We're going to talk about it Wednesday. We'll break it down a little bit, what it is, what it isn't, and what it could be. Uh, my advice for all of you journalists out there who have to be first and be right, whenever you hear that PW Insider Elite breaks a trademark story, there is no breaking a trademark story. They don't have connections in the U.S. government that's going to say, hey, this person just trademarked this. If you want to be first to break news of WWE trademarking names or AEW trademarking names, here's a piece of advice. Here is sausage for all of you. You got to bookmark the U.S. trademarks website. And every single day, you go to the search, and you type in all elite wrestling. You type in world wrestling entertainment every day twice a day in the morning when you get up and in the evening before you go to bed, check it because if a trademark has been applied, you will see it and you could break it to everyone. It's, you know, breaking news, AEW just trademarked all elite women. So every time I see that, yeah, I laugh because I'm like, nobody broke the story. They just went on the website, did a search and voila, no one else did the search. Jeez. So little sausage advice for everyone out there. Hey, look, here's sausage for today. Sasha and Naomi will reveal their current WWE status. Sausage, because they're going to be asked a thousand times at C2E2. But, um, you know, it's very easy to make sausage if you, you know, know what you're doing. So, you know what disappointed me yesterday? Besides having no video during the watch party, <laughs> that made me so disappointed yesterday the maximum male models they're not dropping the gimmick everyone they just didn't waste time on it yesterday so kind of missed it a little bit kind of missed it a little bit uh let's briefly talk about aew rampage yesterday we had john moxley beating vance Vance Warner, I keep saying Vance, because I did get a Preston Vance. We will we have something to say about that later. Mance Warner taking on John Moxley, losing it in a championship contest. Listen, I'm not a big fan of Mance Warner, but I gotta be honest with you. I enjoyed the hell out of that match yesterday. Mance Warner, I was like, hey, you know what? There's something about this match that I'm kind of like really feeling. That was a decent match yesterday. So I kind of enjoyed it. Um, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland beating Tony Nese and Josh Woods in a street fight. I mean, they they tried. Sterling Mark Sterling. I don't call him smart Mark. So he's Sterling Mark Sterling. Motherfucker, like I said, he does so much stuff in the back. I don't know why. I'm not jealous. I don't know why he's being rewarded with all of this TV time. You know, maybe there's just something, there's an underlining condition we don't know about. And they're just feeling sorry for him. Or maybe blackmail. Like, he did a spot yesterday where they set up a table, and he climbs the top. Keith Lee stops him. And Keith Lee, like, throws him off the top rope. This motherfucker decides, hey, I'm going to do the macho man elbow drop onto the table. I just, the guy, I honestly think like people just pop when somebody hits him. But this is a guy that honestly, you, you know, when people say like, get rid of one and it'll be like M&M's, Kit Kat, Peppermint Patty, and I don't know, Twizzlers. Like 
I, you could put anything in front of me. You could put Dana Brooke. Um, who else really sucked in wrestling? Dana Brooke, uh, Jay Wow, Sterling, Mark Sterling, and take your pick, Happy Corbin. I would still choose Sterling, Mark Sterling. I don't get what they see with this. I mean, it's just, I think it's awful. I think it's awful. Now, yesterday was very interesting. Yesterday, Madison Rain made her debut. And she actually debuted in the ring. She took on Layla Gray. Now, this, you could put Eva Marina, still would choose Starling Mark Starling. I don't think you could put anybody in there that I wouldn't choose Starling Mark Starling. But anyway, um, Madison Ray made her debut yesterday. Now, this is going to set up her versus Jade Cargill Wednesday on Dynamite. We talked about that on Wednesday. Um, Madison Ray gets the win yesterday. Anybody notice, like, the non-existent reaction to her? I kind of felt bad for her yesterday. The match itself was not bad, and it kind of had some hiccups here and there, and that's only because Madison Rain and Layla Gray don't really work against each other. But, you know, I think Madison Rain better suited to stay as a trainer and, um, yeah, Ram said she's there as a trainer. But as far as on TV, you know, yesterday there was, like, very, very little reaction. Almost none for the most part. And the match was okay. And, you know, this almost feels like, okay, we don't know who else to feed to Jay Cargill. So we'll assign our new trainer to do it. And that's fine. Madison Rain will make Jay Cargill look like a million dollars. Where it goes from here, I don't know. But Madison Rain made her AEW debut yesterday on Rampage. And I don't know. Something was really, really lacking from it. It didn't feel important. And she will be an asset. I am not crapping on her. She will definitely help the women of tomorrow. Her, Serena Deeb, and a few others, and some of the more established women, Thunder Rosa, they do help the younger talent. Don't think that because someone is not a trainer means that they don't do anything behind the scenes as well. She helps. Dan, uh, Brian Danielson helps. Quite a few people help. So speaking of Brian Danielson, I wanted to mention this quickly. Um, we just had Brian Danielson. Excuse me for a second. I turn my air conditioner on. It's starting to get hot in here. Uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Garcia, we just had that match with a very interesting finish of Brian Danielson losing. Well, now there is some sausage to be put on the grill. AEW is seriously considering having Brian Danielson versus Daniel Garcia two at the All Out event. Now, a lot of you out there may say to me, hey, wait, DT, we're crowning the first ever trios champions at All Out. What if they're in the finals? The problem with that is John Moxley is likely going to be defending his interim championship at All Out. Some people think that CM Punk may be able to return in time for All Out to go up against Moxley for the championship. Title versus title. So the thing is, if Moxley is going to wrestle for that defending the interim championship, that kind of puts a kink in their trios team. So as of right now, look, could Moxley wrestle twice? Yeah. But you think Brian Danielson will also wrestle twice? Uh, I don't think so. So I don't think, I look, we said it last Wednesday, not even this Wednesday. We said last Wednesday that we think it's going to come down to Hangman Page and the Young Bucks versus Adam Cole and Red Dragon. That was a week before the split went down. Um, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly not being cleared, you know, I haven't had a chance to look into it, but it felt more like storyline than anything else. And they may not be cleared now. They might be cleared a month from now. So let's wait and see. But I think it's going to come down to the elite fighting each other. And you know what? 
If that happens, I am 1,000% in favor of it. Because when it really comes down to it, I'd rather see a, a, a variation of the elite get it, probably more than anybody else. Like Santana and Ortiz, you know, that's done because of Santana's injury more than anything else. I know they don't get along anymore. I know Conan talked about it. But that's done. Um, you know, Blackpool Combat Club, I don't see it. I just don't see it. And if they are in the tournament, I expect Yuta to eat the pin. I still am shocked that nobody reported about last week that AEW did not want William Regal on record calling Brian Danielson's loss. I mean, I've, I'm a little bit surprised about that. I still have yet to see anybody talk about that. But uh, now Regal is everywhere. Regal was on yesterday, you know, for, for one of the matches. And I'm, I love Regal. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. But they are seriously considering having those two face each other at All Out. I think that would be a pretty, pretty interesting match. And you know I think who's going to get the win the second time around. Brian Danielson's got to get his win back, you would think. So, all right. On Monday, we will preview Dynamite. We'll preview NXT. We'll give you an update at Clash at the Castle. Right now, there's only two matches announced for Clash at the Castle. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Liv Morgan versus Shayna Baszler. On Monday, we obviously will see progression with the tag tournaments. Uh, we'll see what uh, what else goes down. And Ciampa will be taking on Bobby Lashley for the uh, United States Championship. I don't see Ciampa getting the championship. I think it would be way too soon. But it, I'm very curious to see what they do with Ciampa beyond Monday. That I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, some very bad news on the NXT UK front. Ilya Dragunov had to relinquish the NXT United Kingdom Championship. He suffered an injury after defending his title last week, and he had some type of a cast boot around his foot. Now, I have not had a chance to look into what his injury is, but the fact that he had to relinquish the championship means he's going to be out for an extended period of time. So, you know, we wish the best for Ilya because still, Ilya versus Walter, you can't, I can't top it. I can't top it. I mean, it's just spectacular. And that is probably my favorite NXT match of all time. That was just a, a masterpiece. And, uh, you know, we hope Ilya gets back sooner than later. So, congratulations. Cassie Lee, who you remember as Peyton Royce in the Iconics, the Inspiration. Her and Sean Spears are expecting their first child. Now, it's no secret that, you know, I am a supporter of their podcast. They are on the Pro Wrestling TV Network with yours truly. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very happy for them. You know, they're expecting their first child. I mean, that is a special thing. You know, kind of sucks that I'll never, you know, feel that, but very, very cool to always see news like that. You know, I may not have liked the Iconics as a wrestling tag team, although they got better as the inspiration, but you always see something like that. And if you, you know, if you can't find in your heart to just be happy for a couple to expect their first child, and you got to be one awfully miserable person, man. So, you know, on a wrestling standpoint, you know, she's not going to be in the ring anytime soon, but uh, they retired already. You may remember they retired doing a little bit of stuff in Hollywood. So nice to see the next chapter in their life. You know, they're going to be parents. That's that's a very cool thing. So congrats to both of them. Um, okay, I want to share one other thing with you, and then uh, I think I have one or two other questions to get into. Actually, let's shoot them out now. Nero Faye with the 15 spot. No offense, but his daughter is falling asleep while listening to me, and thank you for the help. Yeah, I, I don't think my shows are very interesting for children. I know sometimes they like, you know, some like the expletives, and yes, the shows are not directed towards children, especially now when I plug Manscaped. 
Tonight's episode, or today's episode of the Don Tony Show is brought to you by Manscaped. The Ultra Smooth Package is back once again. If you've never been on the Manscaped website, that is a website for men, pretty much. And the design is, is we want a, a more groomed, a, you want a more groomed man out there. Doesn't matter if you like your M&Ms with peanuts or without. Fact of the matter is, you know, down there, it could get a little bit messy at times. And I don't know about you, but, you know, I don't think, you know, male or female, you want to go down there and it's like you're in the weeds, you're in the cornfield somewhere in, I don't know, in Missouri. You know, the idea of Manscaped is to get grooming products, not just for down there, but up here as well. They got cool T-shirts, underwears. But the package I wanted to share with all of you, the Ultra Smooth Package, and I'm looking at a paper because I don't want to leave out any of the items. I use it. And they have something called the Lawnmower. The Lawnmower 4.0, it's basically a razor because what you need to understand, you know, it, you see this? Imagine this is down there. You're not going to take a regular hand shaver and start trying to cut this. Otherwise, it'll look like a bad horror film. You need to use an electric razor first to get rid of all the excess. That's what the lawnmower 4.0 is for. So if you're one that has not trimmed the cornfields for a bunch of years, you want to pick up the lawnmower 4.0, trim down there, get it nice and neat, and then you get the ultra smooth package. You get first the crop exfoliator. You got to take a shower, everyone. If you want to do it the right way, I know for some of you out there, you may not do it, but you got to take a shower. You go in the shower, you get the crop exfoliator, you wash down there, it gets rid of dead skin, it makes it nice and soft. And then you get out of the shower, you rub some crop gel. And it's like aftershave for the face. It's like, ah, feels good down there. And it's like getting you ready. And then you take the razor and... You trim yourself as much as you want because it is a proven fact. I think it's like 92% of people out there surveyed that they would prefer their significant other to be groomed. So, and you might be single right now. Your date might be only fans in a tissue, but you never know. You might go to the supermarket. You might go to the post office. You might go outside to grab the mail and you may lock eyes when someone and then the next thing you know, you know, you got a little Tinder event. And what are you going to do? You're going to cross your legs like uh, that, that Sharon Stone and not show what's down there? You have yourself nice and exfoliated and cropped because of Manscaped. You could sit down and do a Sharon Stone. Even if you got a big, giant tummy like yours truly, at least down there, it'll look nice. Go to Manscaped.com. Use the promo code. Don't trip. I don't know why they came up with that. I think it's supposed to be Don T trip because I'm going on a trip soon. I don't know, but I, it spells don't trip. Maybe because I fell the other day. I legit fell. I'm not going to show you the cuts, but don't trip. 20% off free shipping. Go check it out. Manscaped. <laughs> Only fans in a tissue. Some people can relate. Some people. I tell you about OnlyFans. I will never throw shade on anybody who has one type of those accounts. Look, I do know the shadiness that OnlyFans will do to some people. I know, you know, we haven't even talked about the Tammy Sitch OnlyFans account and what it has transformed into. Maybe we'll do that on Monday. But OnlyFans, you know, sometimes it could be a nightmare for some people who have accounts there. Uh, but I will never throw shade on someone who can, you know, make some good coin off of it. As long as you feel comfortable doing what you do, if people want to see it, they pay for it. Good for them. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, I'm amazed at how many people that do have one. Like I have people that support the shows. They'll say, Hey, keep up the good work. And this and then I'll respond back in a DM or something, I'll be like, oh, thank you very much. And I click on the profile because I don't know how half these people are. And I see, oh, check out my OnlyFans. Check out my OnlyFans. Check out my OnlyFans. Check out my... And I'm like, wow, I'm like pretty surprised how many people out there that have these accounts. Pretty surprised. All right. Uh, shout out to 
James Edward. Thank you for the 10 spot. Sorry to send this late, but do I think Cross could be added to the Drew McIntyre Roman Reigns match? Do we think they might put one of the titles on him soon? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> right now, people are giggling. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Um, you know, I, I closed out all the pictures already from earlier. If you go back and you watch that segment, in the left-hand corner, it said WWE Castle. As Cross was doing everything he does, he did, hashtag WWE Castle. So this was designed to be part of this segment. So do I see Karrion Cross possibly being thrown into this match? Yeah. We kind of fearing it right now. And look, I don't need to explain my support for Cross, but I'm not feeling that right now. Because if it becomes a three way, now you start thinking, I don't want Reigns to lose his championships because someone else was pinned. Is Cross being put in that match as a way for Roman to lose the titles without being pinned? Will Adam Pierce come out and say, Roman, you defend this championship against Drew, you defend this championship against Cross? That could happen also. What if it's still just Drew versus Roman? Why would Cross help Drew win the championship? So right now, as of right now, I am ecstatic that Cross is back. I love that they are bringing his other look back, you know, and that look kind of mirrors him in real life. That's when you could bounce off your real life, that's when things are even better. That's when things are even better. Even with promos, how many times do we say over the years with promos that someone you know, when they could cut a promo or they could do something in the storyline that ref reflects their life, it feels even better. You look at uh, Dax uh, from FTR, you know, bringing up his eight-year-old daughter. And that worked into not only the storyline, but who he is and fighting and just, you know, just you have that reality attachment. It makes things that much better. Even with my horrible stuff, you know how how good of a response I got when I did those two promos back in the day when I told everybody on the, when I was doing the indie wrestling managing stuff I said you don't want to face me I am the most dangerous person in that ring Don Tony is the most dangerous person in wrestling why because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing I will drop you on your head I will turn your ankle sideways. I will turn you into a pretzel and not know what the fuck I'm doing. When you, 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 you look at uh, Robert Gibson, yeah, Robert Gibson or Shawn Michaels, you, you, that's what your limbs are going to look like. I'm the most dangerous person out there because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Or when I stripped down that time, showing all my injuries. You know, I have all these injuries in my lifetime. I'm going to be scared about someone threatening to beat me up. Look at what I went through. So you could base reality. It always works better. So Cross, this is an extension of who he is. And he's going to be able to input. And that's a beautiful thing. But I'm very concerned where this three-way is going to go if it happens. Right now, it is way too early to tell. I don't know where it goes from here. But... I still feel Drew McIntyre almost has to win the championship. He almost has to. You can't, I just can't see it being left for Cody down the line. And we still have the Rock versus Roman in the back burner for WrestleMania. I just feel that, especially after the Brock stuff, this is Drew's last chance in my opinion you're in front of 70,000 plus in the united kingdom this is the wembley moment this is the wembley moment this is something that 10 years from now people are going to remember and maybe drew mcintyre with all due respect is not on the level of a bret hart i don't know how you feel towards davy boy smith and him but the point is for this contemporary wrestling fans out there Drew McIntyre winning in the UK, getting that championship, ending Roman Reigns' streak, which will be about 730 days around that, that is huge. And I don't want to see it end 
or or happened, whichever way you look at it, because Karrion Cross got pinned. It's not even about Karrion Cross getting pinned. It's about anybody other than Roman getting pinned. So maybe we'll see something where Karrion Cross like knocks out Roman Reigns and then somehow somebody else shows up, takes out Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre goes and gets the pin. You know, maybe that's a little bit better. Roman gets pinned, but I don't know. Right now I think it's a little too early. So all right. One last thing before we get out of here. Definitely love your opinion on it. Want you to think about it. Eric Bischoff. Today we'll talk about Eric Bischoff towards AEW. Monday we'll talk about Jim Cornette and Jake Paul versus AEW. Eric Bischoff talked to Ryan Satin this week. AEW was brought up in the conversation. Eric Bischoff feels that AEW is not competition to WWE, no matter how much Tony Khan wants to believe it. He says, and I quote, Tony, you're in the same business. That doesn't mean that you're competition. You're not taking market share. You're just in the same business. It's like a little mom and pop hamburger joint and an Arby's hamburger joint. You're both hamburger joints, but you're not in competition with each other. How do you feel about that? Seriously. Because I'll be honest with you. I kind of disagree with Eric Bischoff. I really do, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, next year, TV rights negotiations are going to, I believe, start happening again for WWE and AEW. Now, AEW, would they get a $144 million deal? All right, $40 million, $45 million for three years, whatever it is. I don't remember the exact amount. I think we all agree, even if you're not an AEW fan, I think we all agree that AEW is worth a hell of a lot more now than what it was a couple of years ago. And I also think that even though the uh, Warner Media anticipated some name signing, there was never a guarantee CM Punk was going to come in. There was never a guarantee Brian Danielson was going to come in. There was never a guarantee that some of these wrestlers would have came in. So AEW's value has got to be a hell of a lot more than what it was a couple of years ago. So do I think AEW is a threat? To WWE, listen to what I'm saying closely. AEW is not a threat to WWE because remember what I always say: you have 900,000 AEW fans tuning in. How many of them also watch WWE? I could tell you that when we do an AEW Rampage watch party, 95% of everybody who's there also watch SmackDown. So. How many fans, you keep this to yourself. If you want to post it in the comment section later, what you think, realistically, if you have a million AEW fans watching Dynamite, how many of that million also watch WWE programming? I would say probably 60 to 70%. I really believe for every million fans that watch AEW, I think almost 700,000 of them also watch WWE. That is something it would be impossible to figure out because if you do a poll, people are going to lie to support the promotion they like the most, period. So you can't do a poll with that. But, but WWE doesn't have to worry about AEW right now. But what happens if AEW scores a $500 million deal? What if they score a $300 million deal? $144 million is a lot of fucking money. Their deal has only got to go up. So if they score a $300 million deal, which is not out of the question, that gives you the opportunity to grow even more. And you don't grow simply by just adding another show. You know, the, we'll talk Wednesday about the possibility of an all woman show, but th now you might be able to sign some names you never even ever thought would sign 
with AEW. You might be able to, you know, branch out and do pay-per-view. That's where you have to then start thinking about. So, no, I don't think AEW is tremendous competition for WWE right now. But if they score a bigger TV deal next year, and you start seeing fans choosing to spend their money on AEW first and WWE second, that's when you that's when you talk about it. Until WWE's financials start going down, no, I they're both in the same. And guess what? This is the cool thing about it. Baseball, you have dozens and dozens of teams. Movies, you have many different movie companies. Pro wrestling, you have many different promotions. There never should be only one promotion. There never should be only one baseball team. There never should be only one movie company. There is enough for it to be spread around. So AEW can do well, make money in the end, get a profit down the line, and have a good enough product where they could stick around for decades and decades and decades and still not put a dent in WWE's product. But look at it on the flip side. I just said to you, for every million AEW fans, about 700,000 also watch WWE. How many WWE fans also watch AEW? So I would think, if you look at the reverse, maybe a third of WWE fans watch AEW. Well, if you get more WWE fans to start tuning into AEW, AEW's numbers go up and they're WWE fans. So what Bischoff says makes sense, but AEW definitely has room to really, really grow. And if they grow, they continue to grow. Yeah, one day they will be competition. When you can now put your product to a level where fans literally have to cho choose McDonald's or Burger King. I could only buy one. And you start seeing more people buying Burger King over McDonald's, or you see a significant other, that's when you talk about it. So AEW, you know, they're doing well. No rush. No rush. I have things to say Wednesday about the women's because it just feels like Tony just wants to be part of all these different things. But again, it's turning into a kid that has a whole ton of toys in his room, but is not spending enough time on each toy. You know, okay, we got to get the trios titles out there. We got to have the Ring of Honor stuff out there. We got to have this out there. Now we have to have a women's show out there. Now we got to have the dark show. Now we have to have Elevation out there. Now we got to do this out there. Now we got to do this out there. And everything is like, you know, like not completed. You know, it's like rebuilding 12 cars and you walk into the garage and there's only one car rebuilt and everything else has parts scattered everywhere. You know, it might be better for him to focus more on what he has and have it grow than to just add, 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 add. So we'll talk about it Wednesday. For now, I am going to jet out of here. I thank you very much. Don't forget, tomorrow night, 8.05 p.m. Eastern, Sunday night, August 7th, I will be here for the sit-down. Tomorrow, for an hour to an hour and a half, I will sit back and we will talk about whatever is on your mind. Want to talk more about what we spoke about today? Absolutely. Have any other topics you want to get into? Nothing is out of bounds. Wrestling, non-wrestling, whatever is on your mind. The only way you could be part of this show and contribute is by showing up. So for me, right now it is about 12.30 in the afternoon, so it is my time to go. I thank you for joining me. Have a great day day for my fan, friends in the United, I almost said fans. I don't call you fans, you're friends. Have a great day for all my international friends. Have a great evening. Enjoy the weekend. Stay safe. And I uh, hope to see you tomorrow night, 8.05 p.m. On the way out, smash that like button. That helps. It helps more than you know. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, I'm out of here. Be well. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. For me to live any other way was nuts. To me, those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead. I mean, they were suckers. 
They had no balls. If I wanted something, I just tuck it. I ran everything. I paid the bills. I paid the hosts. I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup, and I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks.